Hello, I'm Edward Tart, math teacher, with a short math lesson which will lead to a challenge with prizes available. This is about the most important equation in all of math, the Pythagorean equation, named after the Greek mathematician Pythagoras who discovered it. It's about a right triangle, meaning a triangle that contains a right angle, a 90 degree angle, like this. If we call the two legs of the triangle, that is the sides that form the right angle, A and B, and we call the third side, which is known as the hypotenuse, C, then the equation is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That means A times A plus B times B equals C times C. What that means geometrically is this. If we have that right triangle, any right triangle, and we build a square on each of its three sides, we have this red square and this red square and this green square. If that side is A, the area of this square built on that side is A squared, A times A. Same if, with B. If this side is B, this area is B squared. And if this side, the hypotenuse, is C, this area, the green area, is C squared. And so the equation says A squared, that's this area, plus B squared, that's this area, equals C squared, that's this area. Meaning that the combined areas of these two red squares come out exactly the same as the area of this single green square. That is the geometric meaning of the Pythagorean equation. Now, my understanding is that in most classrooms in our nation, middle school and especially high school, this equation is presented without proof. It's just presented and then the students are to accept it and use it. But there are many, many proofs of the Pythagorean equation and there's one that I understand, that, that I know, and it makes sense to me, and I want to go over that proof with you. Here we have a square. I have divided the square into a smaller red square, a larger red square, and two black rectangles. Now in a minute I'm going to show you a square exactly the same size as this, but imagine that I take a pair of scissors and I cut each black rectangle diagonally, corner to corner, such as from here to here. That will change the two black rectangles into four right triangles. And I'm going to position the four right triangles, as you see here in my second square, that forms a green square. Now, I'm going to call that green square the leftover. And I'm going to call these two red squares the leftovers. Because the black parts of both squares are the same, the leftovers must total the same. That is, the red leftovers, the two red squares, must total exactly the same area as the single green square that left over. Well, that's the Pythagorean equation. Here are the squares built on the sides of, of one of those right triangles. This area plus this area equals this area. That's it. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So that's a demonstration of the truth of the Pythagorean equation. Now comes the part of the lesson which will lead into the challenge. This is to discover groups of three counting numbers. Counting numbers means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and so on indefinitely. Groups of three counting numbers that satisfy the Pythagorean equation. In other words, you need to find three square numbers where 
two of them added equal the third one. Here's my suggestion. Make a table with an x column on the left and an x squared on the column, x squared, the column on the right. Number the x column from 1 to 25. And beside each x, multiply it by itself to get x squared. 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9. And so in the x squared column, you'll have a list of square numbers. Next, find the differences in the x squared column. I'll show you what I mean by that. The difference between 1 and 4 is 3. That is, 1 plus 3 is 4. The dif difference between 4 and 9 is 5. That is, 4 plus 5 is 9. That gives us addition statements. And we need an addition statement where a square number plus a square number equals a square number. Uh, this one doesn't quite work. 4 is a square number and so is 9, but 5 isn't. And so we cannot use 4 plus 5 equals 9. We need all three of them to be square numbers. And if you have the x's go down to 25, you'll find some examples. When you find an example, determine what the a, the b, and the c is, what they are, and put them in another table like this, so that you'll have an a, a b, and a c, three counting numbers that satisfy the Pythagorean equation. Uh, we call numbers like that Pythagorean triples. So try to get a list of some Pythagorean triples. Then look for some kind of significant pattern in your list. Specifically, you will have an A, a B, and a C. Ask yourself, what can I do to my A to get my B and my C? you may be able to discover a significant pattern with the x's going from 1 to 25. Uh, if you have difficulty doing that, you may need to go further. You may need to go even as far as near 50 in the x column. But if you can discover a significant pattern in this table, then try this challenge. Find a Pythagorean triple where the smallest of the three numbers is 1,213. That's 1,213. If you find an answer, do not post it at this comment section. Instead, go to, the, go to my profile page, click on Send Message, and message me your answer. If you are correct on your first try, you will be eligible for a prize if you want it, and I will now describe the prize. I play the piano, as is evident from my piano videos. I have piano archives. I will go to my archives, select a variety of pieces that I have played in the past and recorded, burn them onto a CD, and mail the CD to you. If you want the prize, you will need to include your name and mailing address. If you need help deciding whether you want the prize, at my profile page you can access my piano videos playlist and watch one or more of those videos. In any event, I hope that you have enjoyed this lesson and that if you work on the challenge, it will give you mental stimulation and pleasure. Thank you for watching this video.